the worst part about this is waiting for the damn water to boil. Hey guys, welcome to another mukbang. I am excited to have some ramen with you today. Even though today is one of the, it wasn't the hottest day, but this whole week it, it's been close to 100 degrees during the day. I'm filming this at night right now, so it's cooled down a little bit. I'm lucky to live in a beach city, so we have a great breeze. It's cool outside. I kept the window shut just in case you still heard some cars. Actually still, uh, I heard crickets out there. And the last thing you guys wanna hear are crickets. Today we're having some beautiful ramen. And the reason why I wanted to eat ramen, even though it's a hot week, um, it's because I was watching another mukbang video and someone was eating ramen. Um, it was Eat With Justine and I was craving it. So I wanted to make it and I actually wanted to show you guys how to make it um, the way my dad made it for me growing up. So I kind of consider this a comfort food of mine. Um, There's so many ways to prepare it. I know that a lot of poor college students eat their little cup of noodles or their pack of ramen. Maybe I can show you a few ways to to enjoy it a lot, to have it in a different way, not the not the usual way you have it. Make it less boring and more exciting, right? So this one specifically is flavored shrimp creamy tom yum flavor. So it has that um, nice Thai flavor, I believe. Anyways, you can find this at any Asian supermarket. Um, right here, we have eggs. I'll show you how the limes, cilantro, and these green chilies here that I love. We have shrimp that's been deveined, um, deshelled, all that good stuff. So it's easy to use and easy to eat. And I have a bunch of sauces here. I'll explain them while I'm putting the, um, that in. But before I cook, I actually um, wanted to say something to my viewers in Vietnam because I've been getting a lot of direct messages from viewers in Vietnam. And uh, the funny thing about that is I mentioned in my friend bong video that I don't, I can't really read Vietnamese or write it. And they're writing me in Vietnamese and I'm having a little bit of an issue with it. The only it. thing I could do right now is have a Google translation to really help me, but to respond is a, is a whole different yeah, thing. It would be best to just speak in Vietnamese for the viewers um, and to say thank you. So, here it goes. Thì muốn nói xin chào và cảm ơn các bạn của Thiên ở Việt Nam. Thiên hạnh phúc vì có thể giải diện cho Việt Nam và các món ăn Việt tại Hoa Kỳ. Cảm ơn một lần nữa đã xem video của Thiên. All right, ready to cook. Let's see here. This water is taking forever. So I'm opening it up right now. As you can see, it's got the noodles. It's got the flavored packets. So I just have to open that up. I need to open all of them up so it'll be easy to put in. A little bit of ASMR if you guys are into that. Still waiting on this fucking water to boil. Ugh. All right, it's almost getting there. It's getting to a rolling boil, probably. Well, we'll get there in maybe a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> probably wondering why I'm wearing this sweater here. But I do have air conditioning, thank God. I am able to eat ramen on a hot day if I choose to. So, I'm excited. So I'll do the first one. Save these guys. We'll put them in last. Another packet. The sounds for you ASMR lovers.
packet number three. Trash. Ah, can't be dirty. So I like eating these raw as well. I used to. I used to actually. I wouldn't open it yet. I would crack these dry noodles inside the bag. And once I get them to kind of a fine, not fine, but crunchy, broken down texture, I like to take the, this flavored, it's a powder. You just kind of dump it in there and you just eat. I don't know. It's maybe it's an Asian thing. Maybe that's what we did. But I did that a lot with my friends in elementary school or grade school. It was so good. I loved eating it like that. The water is getting hot enough, as you can see. One, two, three, four packets. You don't see it, but let me show you. I actually cut up some cabbage for my ramen because I, I have a rule. Any food, any type of foods I eat or choose to eat really for the most part, um, when I'm not filming, you myself eating fast food, I like to make sure that there's some type of vegetable or some type of green because I need a little bit of crunch in my food and I love what vegetables can do. I know they don't taste amazing, but a lot of the foods that I enjoy eating are salty and I think they, they help break that a little bit. And I, and I think that's important in food eating. You have to understand the balance between two different types of uh, flavors, really. Um, I mean, I sound kind of psychotic about the food, uh, but it's really important to me. I think that's why I am doing a food show is because I love food so much and I feel that there is a chemistry, there is a connection between certain things. Super important to me. I, I, I get kind of sad when all I see is just noodles in a bowl. I need something else. Um, that's why I kind of make something like ramen, something you find at a, any grocery store and you know, if you're poor, you eat it. That's why I can make it complicated with a few other things, but it really does make a difference. So, and that's what I'm gonna show you. So the water is heating up, and while it is, what do I like to do? So actually, I wanna show you what I put in here while that's still heating. So on top of the cabbage, I like to actually put this kind of like, it's kind of like soy sauce, but it's actually a lot lighter in flavor. So the saltiness level is very low, and that's why I prefer it um, compared to regular soy sauce. I actually haven't even opened it yet. I just bought a new bottle. All right, so what I'll do is throw a little bit in there. top of that and then I have to have a little bit of fish sauce and I got the three crabs brand which my mom um, lives by she lives by anything with a with a number three so uh, as far as Vietnamese brands she says get the three crabs or if I buy rice she'll say buy the three the jasmine rice with the three ladies on the front of the bag. I think some of you guys would know, but she she would only buy anything with three things on it or three items on it. So this one has three crabs and I will put a good amount of soy sauce. And what's great too about ramen is that later you can add these guys in to adjust the flavor if you need to. So I have sesame oil. I love sesame oil in my my ramen kind of gives it a different dimension, um, a different flavor. And chili oil. I have this thing where when I have noodles or any ramen, and when you see the, that chili oil that floats to the top, I don't know, it just kind of triggers something in my mind. It just looks so delicious. I love it. 
I'm gonna leave this black pepper for later because I actually like adding black pepper to my ramen. You would be very surprised at what black pepper can do with your um, bowl of soup. Trust me. I'm gonna put that all back there. Let's see how our noodles are doing. So this is the time where we put in our flavored powder. Now, just because I used four packets doesn't necessarily mean I need to use all four of these. I mean, four bags of ramen doesn't mean I need to use all four of these packets. They are very, very salty. I will probably, let's see how it looks with two. Probably do three out of the four. I mean, I did, I did make sure to measure out the amount of water I need for each, for each bag. Fuck it, you know what? I'm shooting a show today, right now. You might as well just go for it. Full flavor, right? Mm, it smells so good. Let's turn it down to low. So these guys here, you know what? I think it's just to flavor your broth. They're kind of a bitch to open. Or I mean, to squeeze out. So I have to use a pair of scissors. You just be careful with the ramen too, because if it sits in the boiling water for too long, it gets kind of It gets kind of too soft, actually. So you know what? I think it's done cooking. I'm gonna turn it off. Mmm. You don't even know how good that smells right now. I love Tom Yum flavored anything. All right, so what I'm gonna do is throw in these raw shrimp. Why am I being so delicate? Just fucking toss the shrimp in there. Mmm. Turn it up a little bit so that the shrimp cook. So remember I brought us some eggs and what I like to do with these eggs um, is to crack them directly into the pot here while the water is um, still very hot. So it'll cook inside kind of like a ball um, so the yolk is not broken. I want to actually break the yolk while, I, um, while I'm eating the ramen so that the broth kind of turns this yellow color and it's it makes the broth creamier and I love it. I think it's fantastic. So we'll go ahead and crack that egg. There's one. There's two. Last one. There's three. So you guys see the eggs? Just let them sit in there for a little bit and um, I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. All right, so I think it's time to pour this in. On top of the cabbage, I don't like to put the cabbage, oh shit top of the cabbage. I didn't put the cabbage inside of the the pot while it was um, while it was cooking because I, I don't like it when the cabbage gets soggy. I like them to be a little bit on the crunchier side so I didn't want to kill them yet. Do a little bit of that because I love cilantro um, and then I always love to put freaking lime juice this lime does not have any juice in it. It's 
It's like a dead lime. So, you know, with limes, someone actually, amazing, um, someone actually told me how to pick out limes. They told me to grab limes that feel like baby skin, you know, soft, mushy, like baby skin. Ever, ever since they told me that, I've always, I'm always reminded by that. And I love that description. It helps me choose, you know, the best um, lime with the greatest amount of juice. I didn't do a very good job with this one, but I've had this lime for maybe a week or so, and I think it's getting dry and old. But I actually prefer to put this chili garlic sauce. It's in this container um, in my ramen because I actually like how chunky it is. You can see the you can see the chili the chili seeds. You can see a little bit of you know garlic, whatever they blend it up. I think it tastes better that way. So, like I told you, I love to put black pepper on that. And last but not least, I have shared tea, oolong milk tea with mini boba. Mm. Oh, they call it mini pearls. I freaking love, I love boba. I love milk teas. I love these little chewy tapioca balls. I fucking love them. Mmm. And I love it when they're mini because they're easier to chew. The big ones take a long time and they actually fill you up faster. Even if the amount was the same with the large ones, I feel like psychologically, these things don't fuck with me. I, I still am able to eat them, chew on them, not feel full. So that will be my drink. All right, I'm ready to eat this ramen with you guys. I also have my chili here, which I will be chewing on. Just like my favorite, one of my favorite mukbangers, Lala loves, she loves chewing on these as well. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. I have my shrimp here, as you can see. I'm trying not to break the egg just yet. Wow, this, this is a lot of food. Do you see here? Ah, if I can get it. See that egg? Let's get all the juices out so I can get you a closer look. See that egg? That yolk? Let's actually, let's leave it there. So this is definitely going to be a favorite for the ASMR viewers because you guys like the sound of slurping. If it makes you feel comfortable, I don't care. Enjoy. You might like. You might even. You might even realize how much you like the sound of slurping. And in Asia, that means that you're enjoying your food. Hmm. Hmm. The flavors are just right. You, can I just tell you, the secret ingredient to most of the foods that I eat, anything that makes something like this taste so good, is fish sauce. I wish I still had it here, I moved it. But I really honestly think it's such a wonderful ingredient to really make your food taste savory and salty. It's funny because I was watching The Food Network and there was a challenge. Oh, was it the Food Network? It was Bravo's Top Chef and this guy who was cooking barbecue, literally barbecue, and his secret ingredient was fish sauce and he won that challenge because the judges were so surprised about how it tasted and how delicious it was. Hmm. Shrimp. Hmm.
these green ones are not very, not as spicy as the red Thai chilies. The red ones would definitely kill you. Let's move up some of that cabbage. So I just want to say thank you really for people who are directly messaging me, messaging me on Snapchat um, to wake up to these wonderful messages. I think it's incredible. I would almost say that, I mean, I think I'm lucky. I mean, I, I was going to get emotional about it, but uh, it's hard for me to talk about, I think, because a lot of people don't. I think what I'm trying to do is explain to you how it feels to be on the other end, to be the one who's being viewed, you know, and getting all this love and attention. And it's hard for me to describe. And I think that a lot of YouTubers have a hard time describing that because we can only say, oh, I love you so much. I think you're fantastic. Thank you. You're wonderful. I can only reply to your comments so many times saying thank you, thank you, thank you. But sometimes, I mean, as you can tell already, I'm quite an emotional person. Right? I feel a lot more than I should. But I really, I don't know, I just feel really involved with you guys. And I, and I want you to understand how much I appreciate everything you've done, all the comments, all the messages. Um, I can't explain the feeling what it's like to wake up to these wonderful messages or these comments saying that, you know, I just found your channel, I adore you, blah, blah, blah. You, you have to know how, you, you just have to know how that affects me as a person or as a human being. Same with you, when, just imagine yourself, you know, waking up and your phone's full of notifications of people that are being gracious to you. It really does ch change your life and it really changes the way you view things. So I am appreciative. I just don't know how to, I sometimes I don't want to handle it. So I just want to cry. <laughs> Hmm. I'm going to break this egg. Do you see this egg? Oh, wow. Wow. It's shit like that that makes me fall in love with food. Wow, let's see how it tastes now. I have a chunk of yolk right there. You don't fucking know how good that was. I'm not even being dramatic. That was so fucking good. So speaking of direct messages, I've been getting people asking me um, how, you know, how to start their own mukbang or their own channel. Mm, this broth. So before I tell you how to start your own channel, I want to tell you what inspired me.
the first time I saw Kimi's video, she was eating, I think it was corn and a layer of cheese and something else, I forgot. But when I saw her eating that, I was, uh, I was lying in bed. I think I was, um, I just woke up and I was watching her video and I was so, first of all, I am enamored by Kimi. I think she is just so sweet and talented and incredible. Anyways, with that said, um, I just thought, hey, well, it would be easy. I don't really have to talk. Like it's not, like I really don't have to say anything. I could just eat food and kind of look up the camera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you haven't noticed my first, my earlier videos, I did that. I, I, I said some things, but I didn't really talk as much as I, I should have. Anyways, I just want to tell you how the first time I got my camera with the shittiest camera ever. So if you see the quality of my early videos, it's so dark and the lighting was bad because I didn't, I didn't want to invest a lot of money on these videos because I didn't know where they were going. I'm not going to drop freaking a thousand dollars. On a camera, like a Canon 70D, which I have now, thank God. But I wasn't gonna drop that much money if I, you know, was just starting out, that would make no sense. Mm. I have these suckers. I would sit there like this and I would click on the, you know, the mouse to to record and I would just, stare this way and then it was time I would keep on looking up like this and I just I did not know what I was doing and I had to do that so many times actually I tried it this one night it didn't work out so I just said calm the fuck down relax just do it tomorrow you would think it'd be so freaking easy but it's not I mean you're in a room by yourself talking to the fucking camera and you're thinking no one's around you why would you be so nervous about it and it's, it's, funny. it's so bizarre because you are quite literally in the room by yourself but the pressure that you have you know to either look at the camera or talk is just enormous you know you just get overwhelmed and I think that's where that's coming from. I mean, think about it. You're just literally fucking talking to a camera that just happens to not respond back to you. And I think that was where the viewers, the viewers that were interested in creating their own mukbang or their own channel or uh, kind of a how to start um, response, you know. I I would say, I guess the most awkward thing for me is speaking to the camera that doesn't speak back to me. Even though you guys are seeing this uh, pre-recorded video, I just, and as natural as I try to be, it's just still in my mind, I'm like, fuck, I'm talking to the camera that's not talking to me or responding to me. So that's why I think people are so afraid of, well, what do I talk about? Like, what do I say? Why do you have topics? I need to think of something, you know, specific to talk about. I think that I used to be concerned about not knowing what to talk about, but the way I view it now with this camera is to treat it like really truly you're really truly my friend that i haven't seen in a while and i just have so many things i want to say um but the more you're calculated about what you want to talk about in these mukbang videos the more the more nervous you get i guess is what i'm trying to say the pressure you have to make sure you hit each topic it just doesn't work like that let me tell you the behind the scenes shit that goes on with us mukbangers we always are worried about, you know, what should we talk about? I can't bore these viewers. But 
really, they're watching you because they like you, not because of what you're saying. And I think that if you say something that's interesting to them, it's just interesting to them. It's just icing on the cake, right? Damn, bitch, I was hungry. So anyways, if you want to start a channel, my advice would be to make sure you get a good camera. I mean, don't spend too much money, but I think that it's really important to get one of the best cameras because you don't want your videos to look like mine. Um, my previous videos, they looked so dark and murky and the sound quality was horrible. Um, I don't regret it at all and I'll never remove those videos, but That's my advice. And honestly, just be yourself. There's nothing, just be real. If you want to fucking cuss, cuss. If you want to talk about dicks and vaginas, go ahead and talk about it. If you want to talk about politics, go ahead. There is an audience for everything. I just happen to have the audience who likes talking about dicks and vaginas. I'm just kidding, not all of you. So what are, who are my favorite mukbangers? Um, like I said, Kimi started it all, so I want to really give a shout out to her. I still love her videos today. She's wonderful. I love that she's talking, even though I think some people are kind of upset that she's talking. Whatever. I love Kimi. I also love watching Eat With Justine because she's me, basically. Um, a drunk, a loud drunk. She likes to party, like me. And she loves her dogs, like me. I actually uh, want to ask you, who who would you want me to collab with? Comment down below and let me know who you would actually want me to... to eat with. Not that it's really going to happen, I'm kind of dreaming if that's the case, but what would you like to see? Because I know that you guys um, like to pair certain mukbangers up because of maybe similarities, but who do you think, who would you um, have me collab with? You never know, it might happen. Oh, and I love Lala Loves. The reason why I love Lala Loves is because she, the lot, a lot of the foods that she cooks is very, it's got kind of a homey vibe to them. Foods that only a mom knows how to cook at home or a dad knows how to cook at home. It's very homey and I, I love that kind of energy about her and about her foods. So kudos to that. Every time she cooks something, I just want to fucking reach in the screen and, and eat it. So Lala Loves, I love you so much. You're always on my mind. I love Ben Dean as well. I know that you guys know who Ben Dean is. He's this beautiful, popular, um, he's kind of like the prom king of Mukbang High School. He's, and Kimi's like prom queen of Mukbang High School. I think they're so, they're just incredible. And there's a reason why, you know, they get so much love and support. I love Bendine. Bendine. Ah, uh, that's like my, I hate it when the fucking spoon falls into the soup like that. It drives me fucking crazy. Hmm. This oolong milk tea is so good. It's anything, you know, like I said before, if you eat anything spicy, it's so perfect. It really cools it down. All right, I think this is it, you guys. It's just getting little last pieces.
Thank you for joining me on my lovely daddy's version of ramen. Kind of reminds me of home cooked foods. That's why I wanted to share with you. So the lesson you uh, lesson you need to take away today is that you can make ramen delicious and kind of restaurant quality if you want, but that's all up to you. Just so just run into your fridge, make sure there's at least one green. It could even be spinach, lettuce, whatever. Get a lime, grab some shrimp. Doesn't even, you don't even have to have meat in there. You can even have tofu in there. And make sure you just have a little bit of soy sauce, a little fish sauce. You're done. Sriracha, call it a day. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I will finish my delicious oolong milk tea with mini pearls off camera. Bye, baby.